Final review for y equals mx plus b. You have to be able to recognize <clears throat> which equation goes with a graph. That's an example that I've put here for you. I've given you the graph of a line. This I put it in red, so hopefully it's a little bit easier to see. And then four choices, four e different equations. One of them matches this graph. So hopefully you remember what I was telling you over and over again last quarter was when you get a problem like this, eliminate wrong answers. How do you do that? You look for two things. You look for, is the line going up or down? If it's going down, your slope is negative. If it's going up, your slope is positive. Sometimes people get confused and say, is that this line's going up if you go to the left, it's going down if you go to the right. So what is that, up or down? It's down. You always go from left to the right. Which way is it pointing to the right? It's pointing down. So this line is going down. So you're looking for a negative slope. And a slope is always the number that's with x. So I made it easy on you on these. x is always the first term. But sometimes x is the second term. This might have been 5 minus 2x doesn't matter if the x term comes first or second, the coefficient of x, the number that's with the variable, is your slope. So which one of these have a positive slope? The second one. So you can eliminate the second one. It is definitely not the second choice because it has to have a negative slope. The next thing you can do is look for your y-intercept. And that's where the line crosses the y-axis. So it crosses the y-axis right here, which is up. So it's going to be positive. And it's up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. So positive 5 plus 5 is your y-intercept. So you can eliminate number 1 because that's said plus 2. Now you're down to either choice 3 or 4, choice C or D. And now you have to know what is the slope. Is the slope 1 half? Or is it 2 over 1? Is it 2? And this, this tests you on, do you know, is it rise over run or run over rise? Well, you have to count from one point to the next. I gave you this point and that point right here. You can go all the way from that point to that point if you want to. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 1, 2, 3 spaces. 6 over 3. That's not one of your choices because 6 over 3 reduces. 6 over 3 reduces to 2 over 1, which is 2. So it has to be choice D. Now, you don't have to go that far from one point to the next. You can make your own points if they cross right at a grid on the graph paper. That's why I did this one on graph paper for you. So what I'm saying is right here the line crosses at the grids on the graph paper. So you could have just counted from there to there, which is down 2 over 1, and then you don't have to reduce a fraction. So it doesn't matter. If you skip points that cross, you're just going to get bigger numbers for your slope, but it's going to reduce down to 2 over 1. Like you could have went all the way to this point right here. That would have been down 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and over 5. So if you go from here all the way to there, that's 10 and 5, which still reduces to 2 over 1. So it doesn't matter what point you pick, your fraction is going to reduce to 2 over 1. If you pick the ones that are closest to each other, then you just won't have to reduce your fraction. That's all. All right, so this was choice D. you got to get your rise over run correct. A lot of people last quarter were still picking choice C. They were putting the run, the number going across, on top. It's not run over rise. It's rise over run, rise over run. Okay, two more problems here for examples. Putting an equation in slope-intercept form. If they ask you to graph this or if they ask you to say what is the slope and what is the y-intercept, you can't do that until y is all by itself. Right now, when I say y all by itself, I mean on one side of the equal sign. So if y is on the left-hand side of the equal sign. It's with a negative 5. All you got to do is get that 5 to the other side. So you're going to add 5 to the other side. And when you add 5 to the other side, you can only add it to like terms. That's just a regular old number, 5. So it goes with the regular old number 2. You don't add it to this term because that has an x with it. Those aren't like terms. So you add 5 to negative 2 to get positive 3. So y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. 
There you go. You're done with that one. Now you can say slope is three-fourths and y-intercept is three. Here's another one that's similar to that. Get y by itself. That means you have to get the 4x to the other side. It's a positive 4x. You're going to subtract 4x. Don't make the mistake of adding it because you see the minus sign here and you want to do the opposite. This minus sign goes with a y. This is a positive 4x. So you subtract 4x to the other side. And don't forget, the negative stays with the y. Whatever's in front of a term stays with it. This does not become 16x or 16. They're not like terms. So the 20 stays by itself and the 4x stays by itself. Now you're almost done. That's basically slope y-intercept form, except this is a negative y. So if this is a problem where it says, what is the slope, what is the y-intercept, and you, you say y-intercept is 20 and slope is negative 4, you're going to get it wrong because... You can't say what slope and y-intercept are until you make the y positive. y has to be all by itself. Right now it's with a negative 1. you got to get rid of that negative 1. So when you divide or multiply negative 1 to the other side, it changes all the signs. So this becomes negative 20 plus 4x. So your y-intercept was actually negative 20 on this one, and your slope was positive 4. All right, don't forget to do that. If you don't, if you get a problem on the test where they want to know what is the slope and the y-intercept, don't just look at this and say it's 20 and positive 4 because the y is not by itself. The y is still not by itself if it's negative. Make sure you get a y, a positive y all by itself, and then you can say what the slope and the y-intercept are. Another thing you need to know is how to find slope between two points. That was in Tuesday's video, yesterday's stuff. So if you forget how to do that, watch that video again and be prepared to ask questions tomorrow in the beginning of class before the test if you're having troubles with those.